All right, welcome back to another What is the Story of This Position? And we have another London battle with two 1900 players and a couple interesting decisions I'm going to lay before you. In the first one, it is now white to move. And the simple question is, what is going on? Not just what should white do, but what is going on in this position? So pause however long you like, and then I'll tell you my own thoughts, right or wrong, about what's going on. Okay, so this is in fact a position that every London player should know, and really <clears throat> a position that is a, a very viable system for black. And in this game, black really did have the edge in terms of playing a system that he understood quite well and was able to play it quickly. Um, in this position, uh, I won't call this a, definitely part of the theoretical battle of the London here. In this position, I believe white should play queen b1. It's a weird looking move, but the point is you need to stop both knight e4 and knight f5. Uh, both of those are important to stop. In the game, Joel played queen f3, and we're going to see that this allows black to rotate his pieces quite nicely. And we should say, many strong players have played queen f3, so he's in good company uh, with playing a move that lets black, at least gives black, let's say, an equal game, but maybe more importantly, a position that's easy to understand. Watch what he does. Bishop e7, and now the knight rotates through d6, and really black is more than fine. This is a, a beautiful position for black. Joel uh, does what's right. He goes for it. And now we're going to come to our next position. Uh, I guess I've given a little away by saying that I think black is better. But ask yourself, what should black play? Okay. Now the answer, to a certain extent, is anything. Um, anything that involves... Um, keeping the um, tension in the position. A, a very simple way forward would be knight e4 and knight, knight, excuse me, knight d2 and knight e4. Or you could say to yourself, white's not doing all that much yet. Let's play rook c8 and tell ourselves that that's always useful. At some point, we're going to play b5 as well, and just to break everything open. So... Um, Black made a mistake and played c4. And so this is going to allow, I think, white back in the game. He took. I liked queen g4 a little bit better. Bishop d5. And now, here is a very important position. And, uh, yeah, let me give you a moment, then I'll give you my thoughts on it. Okay. So uh, let me state the obvious. We have a very violent position. Like in the first London battle, it's simply an opening that will lead to violence, even though it feels like it's going to be such a calm affair. Um, there's real questions about what's going on in the position and really who's mating who first. And so... Um, let me show white's move and say one of the reasons, first of all, I don't like it, king e2. There's two reasons I don't like it. One is that the king is undetermined at this point. He has options of going castle, staying where he is, king e2, castle's long. Really four options, right? And keeping black guessing is certainly a good uh, feature. The next thing, though, is more um, concrete, and that is that black is threatening f6 and we need a way to stop f6 and uh, I think h5 is the right move we want to play h5 anyway um, but here the point is that we have knight g6 and that's one of the hidden points of h5 is that we can do this and now we're winning so preventing f6 is a huge part of any attack. Um, the famous game Fisher against Miag Mazurin is a great example of that. Uh, slightly different position, but also stopping f6 as a way of keeping the black king in his box. Okay, so let's go on here. 
and uh, Black did not play uh, did, did not play uh, F6 in time. And let's ask, what should Black do here? All right, pause for a moment. Now, the first thing is that uh, it should be clear is that Black needs to calculate this position very deeply. And um, one thing I want to note here, well, let me first share the move that really Black has to play, and that is knight f5. Um, the knight has to get ready to respond to g6. And the good thing that White did in this game, Black did in this game, was that he played fairly quickly. And that allowed him to actually have a position where you need to calculate and see, think about what's going on. Instead, Black followed on the general trend of saying to himself, okay, I'm just going to wail on white. And one of the interesting things to me about this game that I really wanted to cover it is that white, and like in a lot of stonewall positions, stonewall structures, has two bad pieces. However, if black goes for it on the queen side, well, at least those guys are really good defenders at the very least. And so <clears throat> what's interesting positionally about it, in addition to just the need for calculating, is that when black goes all in on the attack, he is essentially making those pieces useful. Whereas the move uh, knight f5 would really put a damper on the position. Now, one interesting thing that I want to go back to now is that if we go back to this position. One interesting thing is, let's say h5. If black ever plays knight f5, as maybe he should do now because g6 is threatened, now it makes more sense for us to play knight f1 to g3 to get rid of that key defender. And a critical difference between this one and the other one is now our king still can uh, float in the pocket and can go different places, whereas on king e2 he's committed. All right, so let's go back and I'll show you a little bit of what happened here. g6, h6, takes, takes, queen g4, bishop f6, Bishop h4, very interesting position. White has now at least got some kind of play going on. What should black do? Now, as you can imagine, we're already in a little bit of time pressure at this point. And um, black played an interesting move that at least has some um, good practical chances behind it. Uh, the threat is to play bishop f6, queen f6, and knight d7. So I think black really needs to respond to it. And if you can just stop that threat, it's a little bit harder to see what white's going to do. For example, rook b7. And after rook b7, uh, I feel like the game just goes on and we have ourselves a complicated position. Um, and I don't know, I don't know, I'm going to say unclear. In the game, Black did this, and he has some compensation, but the bummer really is that the bishop on d5, it holds all of Black's pieces together, but it's actually hard for him to become an active attacking piece. So Joel went on to win this in a time scramble, and I'll leave it there. I will post, however, the PGN to this game in the uh, the, the description of the video. All right, till next time, bye-bye.